We're here to stop up the blacklist in on Chris now. We're here in solidarity with the November the 14th strikes that are taking place across Europe. Who's in favour of taking some action? Show your hands. Get off the road! Get off the road! Get off the road and let her out! Get off the road! Get off the road! I'd like to give us a message of solidarity from, uh, in support of the uh, November the 14th anti-austerity demonstrations. I'd like to add your hand over to Inspector Andrew O'Malley. Round of applause for Mr O'Malley. Ladies and gents, good morning to you all. It's uh, my pleasure to, to speak to you all. And uh, under the uh, Public Order Act of Section 14, Paragraph 3, I'm now going to put, impose some conditions to you, okay? So please listen to me, because I will enforce these. It's my intention you have a lawful and uh, enjoyable morning without disruption to the local community and yourselves. <laughs> I'm restricting you to stick to the Oxford Street junction with Dean Street on the Crossrail site on the south side of the road to remain on the pavement. Hey, come on. You don't want anyone nicked. You don't need to rush. <laughs> the junction of Oxford Street and Dean Street is just up there by the entrance. So let's just go up there, block the entrance, and then it'll be, easy, it'll be easier for people to talk to us. My problem started off the Olympics. I exposed Deltic services when they were operating the blacklist with Skanska. His boss said to him, well, Frank, if you're in the union, we don't like people in the union here. And about three days later, he was sacked. Well, I always worked up until then. And then after a year out of work, I managed to get a job on Crossrail. And to protect myself, I took the steward's job, not to become a militant workforce, but just for protection under trade union law. But Crossrail didn't care. They just sat the entire company to get me off. When Frank started protesting outside the sites, they went to ACAS and they gave everybody else their job back except Frank. Anybody can single out a man because he's a shop steward, sack him for pointing out that there's 11,000 volt cables on the floor that are unprotected. Trying to save people's lives is an absolute disgrace. I've travelled down today from Leeds to show my solidarity with Frank, but Frank does not stand alone. In Leeds, we have a massive BAM construction site, the Leeds Arena. For weeks we've been picketing this site, but on our forms, on our, on our leaflets, we have been putting union recruiting forms on with stamped addressed envelopes. We've been successful in recruiting 29 workers from the site to join the union. The health and safety executive, on the one hand, says that union organisation is essential to health and safety, good health and safety practices on construction sites and everywhere else, and it's part of HSE's policies, and HSE's research says it's, you're twice as safe working on a unionised site than on a non-unionised site, but as soon as anyone gets sacked, the HSE backs off and says it's now an industrial relations issue and not a health and safety issue, so they don't want to be involved. There's over 100 building workers usually killed every year in accidents on sites, and that's because people like BFK and people like them, like Carillion, they don't want people carrying out health and safety duties on the sites because it affects their profits. We are here today in solidarity with Frank and all construction workers around the country who have been discriminated against, blacklisted, prevented from working. And also I'd like to say 
to the security staff and the BFK guys in there. We're not your enemies, we're your brothers. If we can get on site, we'll improve your wages and conditions. How many of you are getting all they pay this Christmas? Because I know I'm not getting any, and most of the guys on building sites these days are working via parasite agencies, and we've had enough of that. <laughs> We're taking protest action today because we want to show, first of all, our solidarity with the workers across Europe who are taking action today. There is industrial action taking place in 23 European Union countries today. We know that there's uh, general strikes in Spain, Portugal, Greece, Cyprus and Malta. We believe that uh, uh, workers taking action across Europe uh, is the answer to deal with austerity because we're facing a joined up attack uh, by the ruling class and that requires a joined up response uh, from the working class and from rank and file trade unionists. HMRC in uh, Euston and I think in, uh, in one of the DEFRA offices there are, there are protests taking place as well. I mean, this isn't uh, industrial action, it's just protest action but we think it's right to, to take protest action on a day like this and show solidarity with European workers because we're all facing austerity. Our terms and conditions have effectively been ripped up by the government and uh, they're starting afresh and they've benchmarked against the private sector. So we're expecting all of our terms and conditions to reduce. They're looking at annual leave, flexi-leave policies, they're looking at sick absence. People who have uh, disabilities or sickness um, have often uh, thought twice about staying on within the civil service because of the amount of pressure they come under. Um, some people are taking voluntary exit schemes because of it. Performance management policies that they're trying to introduce which are designed to get rid of 10% of staff. You could have a team where all the staff are roughly equal to each other, but under the new proposals you'd have to choose people making up that 10% quota who should therefore be earmarked for capabilities. It's outrageous. There are people in this building who haven't had a pay rise for five or six years. There are people making the British passport who earn around about £16,000 a year. Um, it is really difficult to live on, on that kind of wage. Reducing the headcount of uh, people that are employed within the civil service. Today, we hear, for example, that there's plans to cut uh, 1,000 workers in the Department of Education, 25% of the workforce. I think there is a, a real rank and file mood within PCS against the cuts and a sense of urgency that, that, that more uh, needs to be done. Austerity is not working, there is an alternative. We know now that over the last four years the richest 1,000 people in the UK have accumulated more wealth than, than the actual deficit. So actually this problem, this deficit that we keep hearing about, is easily solved if the political will is there. The political will is not there and I think that means actually it's not about austerity at all. It's about an ideological drive to, to enforce neoliberal policies on, on, on working people in Europe. PCS um, as a national union has led the way in many respects in, in, in terms of uh, uh, taking action against the cuts and against austerity and it's disappointing that uh, other trade unions uh, haven't come with us. For PCS I think it's important that we strike before the end of the year regarding our terms and conditions and whenever there are strikes in Europe we seek to use what mandate we have in the union to take part in those days of action. <laughs> industrial action organized by the trade unions across Europe and the question we all have to ask is why isn't that happening today in Britain why is it the case that with very few exceptions and let me say my own union I am proud that we have had members walk out in offices in a number of parts of the UK why have we not seen an organized attempt to try and get resistance why have we got a situation where despite unanimously agreeing a motion at the TUC conference only two months ago that called for mass coordinated strikes, we see no move to make that happen. And that is a question that we not only have to pose to the leaders of the movement, but we have to discuss right across the board. We saw the marvellous strikes in June by a number of unions and then in November against pensions and we have seen that fritter away. 
I can tell you that our executive a week ago unanimously decided that whilst we need to make the argument continually for coordinated strikes, we can wait no longer and will now be moving to a ballot of 300,000 PCS members for industrial action over the question of cuts and pay freezes. We hope we are not on our own, but if we are, we know we can count on your support whilst we try to build the type of movements that we can see in every other part of Europe. If they can do it in Greece, in France, in Spain and Portugal, it's long overdue that we did it here. Good luck and let's all fight as hard as we can.